Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the scripture Mysticism of Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary is by my worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotirmanand Ji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. So let's get started on today's satsang. Um, yesterday we had covered the naming ceremony of Krishna and Balrama. So let's look at the mystical meaning. In this context of Bhagavatam, Krishna, the incarnation of Lord Vishnu or the divine self, symbolizes the dawning of divine love in the heart of the aspirant. Yashoda represents purity of the heart and Nanda represents purity of the mind. So all purity is required in the heart, in the mind, in the self. And this is the journey to spirituality, the process of purification. Balarama symbolizes the development of indomitable will for attaining God-realization. Divine love, Krishna, endows a person with immense willpower, meaning Balarama. Love and willpower are two inseparable aspects of the divine self, which means we have to do our sadhana which requires discipline and willpower and love is the spontaneous outcome that we enjoy through this journey. Balarama, as indicated previously, was an incarnation of Sheshnag, the cosmic serpent with a thousand hoods, referring to the cosmic mind or Hiranyagarbha, which sustains the universe on a thousand thought waves. The name Sankarshana suggests that all conflicting forces in nature, water and fire, snakes and rats, tigers and deers etc are united by the power of that cosmic mind which holds all things in a divine balance from a cosmic viewpoint so with that let us uh, go to another episode where mother yashoda ties up the naughty butter thief so in um, sanatan dharma and leelas of lord krishna this these episodes are very, very fulfilling, very divine and very full of love to increase our bhakti or devotion. So they are not literally to be taken when we say Krishna is a naughty thief. These are leelas, not theft from uh, the real meaning standpoint which is criminal and wrong so remember krishna is only a baby here uh, as a child in the village of gokula krishna was a constant delight to all the gopis or cow herdesses and gopas cow herds of the village because they were all village folk they uh, their main livelihood was milk and cow and butter and ghee and churning those are the things that uh, krishna grew up in and uh, enjoyed them very much. Of course, each of these has a spir spiritual connotation which we will discuss as we go along this holy scripture. In those days, however, it was his divine naughtiness that stole their hearts as well as their butter. He would steal their hearts, their butter, with all the love the gopis would scold him, but inwardly they would be waiting for Krishna. They loved him so much. In that village of cowherds and cowherdesses, tending to the cows and churning butter from their milk was the primary occupation as we just discussed. Krishna's primary occupation was to get that butter by hook or by crook and eat it up. So, wherever he came to know that freshly churned butter was available in the hopes of in the homes of some gopis, Krishna would take his brother Balrama and some other cowherd boys and stealthily enter that place. If the butter was placed in a vessel that was hanging high up from the roof, the boys would climb on each other's shoulders until they could reach that vessel. If they couldn't get the butter out in that way, they would break the vessel so that the butter would come down pouring. The village gopis came to Yashoda again and again complaining against Krishna. However, behind all those complaints, there was a sentiment of great joy. The gopis delighted in seeing Krishna no matter what he did. And even when they came complaining against him, their complaining was really a pretext to see Krishna again in his home. He was so attractive, so alluring that their hearts were 
as if pulled out to go see him. One day Yashodha directed her maid servants to do various works in her home while she herself began to churn butter. At that time, Krishna moved towards her and climbed up on her lap, seeing her mother's milk. With great delight, Yashoda stopped churning and began to nurse Krishna, gently smiling as she looked at the face of the child. Then suddenly the mother remembered she had placed a vessel full of milk on the fire. Quickly, she put the child down and rushed to take care of the boiling milk. Irritated by the abrupt interruption of his tender communion with Yashoda, Krishna found a stone nearby and hurled it against an earthen pot that contained dahi or yogurt. <clears throat> when Yashoda returned, she found the pot broken and the yogurt was spilled. She looked around and saw Krishna standing up upon an unturned mortar eating butter that he had that was prepared the previous day. He was also playfully throwing butter to some monkeys who had entered their home, as monkeys commonly do in many Indian places. Seeing the great mess Krishna had created, Yashoda stealthily came up behind him with a little stick in her hand to teach him a lesson. When Krishna saw his mother coming towards him, he jumped off the mortar and began to run. Not to be outwitted, Yashoda took up and the chase and ran after him. After a breathless chase, Yashoda was finally able to catch hold of Krishna. Now knowing that he had done something wrong, the child started weeping and rubbed his eyes with his tiny little hands, smearing the black unguent that had been applied to his eyelids, which was a common practice back then. It's called kajal. So, um, that there could be no evil eye cast upon that the child. This was a tradition uh, and it is still a tradition in many Indian villages. When Yashoda saw that her child was terribly frightened, compassion welled up in her heart and she threw away the stick. However, she was determined to still teach him a lesson. So she picked up a little piece of rope and started tying him to hold him in one place. Now, to her surprise, that rope fell short by two inches. So she found another piece of rope and joined it to the first. Again, the rope was too short by two inches. Yashoda then gathered up all the little ropes that were around and joined them together. But each time she tied and she tried, there was never enough length. Seeing Krishna swelling up in that fashion so that he couldn't be tied, the other gopis around all began to smile. When Krishna saw how hard his mother was trying to bind him and how in doing her best in this project, she had become extremely tired and full of perspiration, he stopped his naughtiness and finally allowed himself to be tied up by Yashoda and bound to a nearby mortar a heavy wooden block used in villages for husking wheat, rice and other grains. So that is what happened here. He agreed that's how he was um, bound. Otherwise, who can bind God? So to better understand the profound meaning of the apparent naughtiness of Lord Krishna, that this is the mystical deeper meaning, as a stealer of butter, we must look more deeply at the nature of human feelings. For the vast majority of pe people, feeling is full of impurities. Why? Because we have so many desires. And those desires, when unfulfilled, create anger. And when fulfilled, create more desires and lust. And greed comes in. And all these things are creating impurities. Trying to fulfill the urge to love and to be loved, countless feelings arise in the heart and individual souls move on from one embodiment to another, encountering lots of illusions and frustrations. Only when feeling is purified does the soul discover God as the object and source of supreme love. Unless that is done, we will constantly be 
mesmerized and hypnotized with the projects uh, or objects of the world which is nothing but an illusion when feeling is not yet pure people do turn to god but generally for various specific reasons and objectives when one is in trouble he turns to god to get him out of trouble such are called artha devotees or people in uh, pain and then they remember god when the pain goes away god also goes away they forget about him in other words when one wants wealth he turns to god for the correct numbers to win the lottery etc greed comes in we pray to god for wealth so those are worldly things so this is called artharthi arti artharthi means for resources money when one is confused about solving a problem he turns to god for the solution jigyasu so those are the different types of um, devotees who pray to god uh, and then again when things are settled we forget god obviously that type of turning to god is very limited it is constricted it's better than not praying at all it is better than being an atheist but it is still uh, limited only it is a limited concept impure feeling figuratively speaking is like unchurned milk through intensive practice of spiritual discipline meditation prayer and selfless service that milk of human feeling is churned until pure divine feelings the butter emerges so the goal is to make that milk into butter and we will continue this mystic meaning in tomorrow's satsang this is swami nikhilanand om tat sat